Hey guys, thanks for coming back. It's getting exciting now, huh? So we're on part three, if you remember, um, of the book, which is also contains chapter 18, which is our next chapter. Um, so happy you're here. And I'm not a professional reader or voiceover person. I'm just a mama reading a book to you guys and my kids. So I'm happy, happy that you're here. Also, as you remember, don't forget to visit the library and support your local bookstore. And then you can pick up awesome books like Tornado Brain by Cat Patrick, which you are reading right now. Chapter 18. Fact. There have been instances of tornadoes destroying lighthouses. Sunday morning, the real storm came. Tess and I sat opposite each other at the kitchen table in the cottage, each with a fleece blanket wrapped over our shoulders because our PJs had gotten wet running over from the inn. We were both holding mugs of tea that our mom had made while we waited for the others. I had my feet up on my chair and my mug rested on my knees, which was keeping them from jittering. The pirate lay at the slope, the, on the floor at the foot of my chair. The cottage was crowded. Mom and Officer Rollins sat at the table with us. Officer Saunders and a policewoman, I didn't know, sat on the couch in the living room, which was really the same room as the kitchen since there wasn't a wall separating them, and Charles leaned against the kitchen counter with his arms folded across his chest, the orca tattoo on his arm facing out. The recorder in the middle of the table had a green light illuminated on it. The clock on the microwave said 7.16 a.m., and we'd just finished telling the whole room about Dare or Scare. It had been two and a half days since anyone had seen Colette. Officer Rollins tried to keep it all straight. So you believe that Colette was making videos Thursday night and something happened to her when she was filming and that's why you can't find her. Yes, Tess answered confidently. And you also believe that she changed the uploaded video dates so that it would look like they were older than they are. Yes, Tess nodded. Why? Tess looked at me, unsure. I shook my head. We don't know, Tess answered for us. But you feel confident that she was reenacting your dare or scare game. Is that what you think too, Frankie? He asked me. I think so, I said, feeling groggy and frazzled with most of the police officers in Long Beach stuffed into the tiny cottage. And you initially suspected that Colette might be at Mrs. Sevich's residence. Yes, I said, looking down at my hands, feeling stupid. Officer Rollins said, already explained that the reason the sea witch had gone to the police station was that her property had been vandalized again. I guess it happened sometimes, and officers had gone there to check it out, so they were pretty sure Colette wasn't there. Maybe I felt a little sorry for the sea witch. I don't know. It didn't matter anyway. The dream had made me remember where Colette was for sure, and she wasn't with the stuffed dead animals. Rollins, as, as the officers called him, rubbed his eyes and his forehead, just like he had on Friday. Frankie, We've been looking for Colette for 48 hours straight. We're all exhausted. I don't want to hear that you think she might be out there. I need you to tell me specifically where you think she is. Honestly, I thought I'd already said that, but maybe it was just a voice screaming in my head, telling them where to look. Or maybe I felt like I told the police because I told Tess about my dream. The dream when I remembered the best dare I'd ever come up with. I took a deep breath, wondering, what if I'm wrong? But then I asked myself, what if I'm right? I think she was trying to do a dare I made up, I began. Everyone in the room was looking at me. Charles nodded, and my mom gave me a reassuring smile. But the way Tess held her chin high like she was holding mine up for me made me feel like it was going to all be all right. It was around Halloween when I made it up. Tess and Colette had been there to three haunted houses already, and I knew if I chose to do a scare, they would come up with something terrible. So I had to make the dare really great. And, Officer Allen asked, I dared us to ride to the lighthouse. My mom gasped. Tess started biting her thumbnail, and the officers in the living room took notes, even though the recorder was on in the middle of the table, documenting everything I said. It's not that far, I said, turning my mug in my hands. When I did it, it didn't even take me an hour. I glanced at my mom, who did not look happy. And the fact that I'd ridden by myself to the lighthouse. Did you do it, too? She whispered to Tess. Tess looked at me guiltily, then back at Mom. I told Frankie and Colette that I had, but I lied. I went halfway, but I got scared and turned around. I knew it, I muttered. Keep going, Frankie, Rollins said. 
Colette doesn't have a bike, I said. He looked at me like he didn't get what I was saying, so I added an in explanation. The yellow bike has been missing from our inn. Oh no, Mom murmured, understanding. She means that she thinks Colette took a bike from our inn to try to the dare, Tess said. Yes, I said, nodding, keeping my eyes low. Frankie, when you called yesterday, you said that there was a whole page of dares in your notebook, Rollins said. Why would Colette choose this one? I don't know, I admitted. Tess thought maybe she picked the dares that we all did, but Colette never did this one before. I wonder if she picked the hardest ones or just the ones that were the least, least what? Mom asked. Stupid, I answered, thinking of the dare where you had to see how many marshmallows you could eat before you threw up. Maybe your goal is to do all of them, Tess said quietly. Maybe she's not finished yet. Maybe she just... Tess stopped talking and everyone in the room went silent. I don't know why I felt guilty, but I did. Maybe because the dare had been my idea. And now we were sitting around, talking with the police, and Colette was missing, out there, somewhere, in the pouring rain. Thunder rumbled the floor just to make me feel worse. Officer Rollins looked worriedly, worriedly out the window, then back at me. To be clear, do you mean the North Head or Cape Disappointment Lighthouse? Uh-huh, I said. Which one? he asked. North Head, Tess said. Okay, that's good. Thank you, Tess. Officer Rollins said to the officers on the other room, in the other room, he said. That's, what, four miles? More like five, maybe six, said Officer Saunders. He was sitting in my favorite seat on the couch. My thoughts were spinning too fast to care. I felt completely off the rails. Officer Rollins turned back to me. And what route did you use, Frankie? When you rode. Discovery Trail for part of it. I took a breath, knowing my mom wouldn't like the next part, and North Head Road. The bike path? Officer Rollins asked. I shook my head no. Frankie! My mom blurted out. You could have been killed. Everyone got silent, probably thinking what I was. I could have been killed, but I hadn't been. But maybe Colette had. The policewoman was typing on her phone faster than a texting teenager. You mean Willows to the North Head Road, she asked, her eyes on her phone. I guess, I asked back, because I didn't pay attention to the streets that much unless I have a reason to. Colette could have taken any of the north-south routes, Officer Rollins said to the other officers. Call Martin from Waco and see if they can spare anyone. We need to get the sheriff's office involved, too, the woman officer said. They already are, Officer Rollins said. He picked up their recorder and turned it off and stood up, seeming to fill the entire kitchen, he said. We'll need to check around the roadways in both directions in case she reached that lighthouse and turned around. And Discovery Trail, too. They moved toward the door, pulling the rain gear over their heads and belts full of stuff, clanking and jangling. Thank you, girls, Officer Rollins said before shutting the door to the cottage. Tess hugged me. I led her. All right, guys, that is the end of chapter 18. Thank you for being here. I hope you have the best day, or if you're about to go to sleep, have the sweetest dreams, and I will read to you later. Bye for now.